Hello folks, Clyde Lindsay here from Pixel Pro Displays. Thank you for taking the time to check out today's tips and tricks video. Well folks, today we have a uh, specifically pointed video due to a question that I received via email from Jim. Jim is uh, asking a question of which way is better to get text on a matrix? Do I use a buffer, a subbuffer, or do I use the text effect and layers itself? Which is easier? So we're gonna jump into that in just a second. If you find the information in our PPD videos, our tips and tricks videos, our webinars helpful, then please hit the big subscribe button down below if you haven't done yet, So, and also the bell for notifications. If you do like our videos, click the like button. Remember that you can also join the Pixel Pro University Facebook group, link in the video description, where we do live little mini classroom sessions here and there. We do fun things. Uh, we have little contests each month. Uh, you know, we have a good time and we try to help uh, inform the community on different things pertaining to x lights and the hobby. And also, if you really love the content that we do here, on YouTube, please consider joining the, uh, the PPD Sequence Club. It really does make a difference to us that you guys enjoy the content and that you get the information that you're looking for. So Jim got, went ahead and sent us in this question. He has he has a couple things in here. We'll, we'll address it all. Um, I have a matrix that I divided into a top half and a bottom half using sub buffers. But do I put a text effect in a sub buffer? So uh, that, that's, a, that's a really easy question. Uh, he, then he goes on, he says, I know how to do it with layers and positioning. Maybe layers is the better way, but I will be doing song info for a lot of songs and adjusting layers for each sequence. So we're going to show you both ways of uh, kind of uh, attacking this kind of animal. And we're going to do it using his model. So you're going to get a little model building today. And the model is going to be a 20 by 50 horizontal matrix. So I'm just going to click the matrix tool, click and drag here. And it builds it. And then we'll come here and we'll do, uh, I think, 20 strings of 50 is what his is. Let's, let's uh, go look at the node layout and see. And it looks like string 1 through string 20. Good. That looks good. So we have our matrix. It's, you know, obviously I'm not hooking it up a certain way, so I don't have to worry about. We're just playing around. And what is it called? Matrix-2. So let's go, now that we've created it, let's go into the Sequencer tab. All right, so we've created a brand new sequence. Let's throw some timing marks down. And we've got the text sele uh, effect selected already. Let's go ahead and scroll down to the bottom because I know that the model is down here. It's brand new. Let's uh, insert, right click, and insert multiple layers below. Let's let's do 10 layers. I know that's uh, that's excessive, but I can scroll down even more and move this up higher. Actually, let's do 20 multiple layers, 10 more. So that way it puts it right up here so that it's easy to get to. So let's go ahead and apply the text effect here. And uh, we're working off of this model here, so you should see the, the model preview as well as the house preview. I guess we don't really need this one, uh, but you'll, you'll be able to see it really well up here. Uh, let's go in and let's uh, add the text, uh, hello. And as you can see, x -Lights defaults to uh, centering the effect directly on the matrix. So what's important to know is, is that you can change that where it's centered by scrolling down here and changing your start position. So bef before we go into any more specifics, there is a huge video, there's a two-part two video series on the PPD website that tells you all about the text effect, everything you ever wanted to know and more. But uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, um, all of the, the settings in the text effect here, just that uh, you can move these up and down and that there's some uh, different fonts that we can use. And uh, if you really want to learn more, I, I would highly recommend go watching those two videos. So as we get into this, we notice that we can move this text up and down. We can put it in different places. We can move it left and right. And it, but x lights will auto default to center on all of these. So let's kind of find a position 
where we feel like, oh, we can have two lines of text. Now, this is the way that Jim was telling us that he already knows how to do this. This is how he does it. He comes in and he moves his little sliders around, okay? Let's go ahead and copy this and paste the same effect. Let's change the color. And now let's move it down so that we have two layers. Okay, that looks, that looks rather good right there. So, um, so now you have your two lines of text. Herein lies the problem. Xlates does not scale the text effect at all. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Eh, six to one, half dozen to another. But if we go to the P10 panel here, and I insert a layer below, and I paste this in, look at the text effect here and the difference between how it looks here than how it looks out here. So Xlights doesn't scale it the same way. And the reason for that is because the text effect uses a point system to creating font sizes. So there is no way for anybody to put a text effect on one matrix and unless the matrix matrices are identical in size or closely, then the, the effect, you'll still be able to read it. It just will be so much smaller because that's on a P10 panel. This is literally only, uh, let's see, on the, on the, just on the matrix, on the matrix it's only, um, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pixels tall. That's, that's literally seven pixels tall. You take that and put that on a P10 panel and a P10 panel is only, you know, it's only 16 pixels tall, one little square of the panel is. So it's not going to scale. So that's the first thing you want to learn about the text effect is it doesn't scale. And this might be a problem for you if you're trying to understand what's going on. So beyond that, what Jim wants to know, is it easier to, do, to use a buffer setting? And the answer is kind of yes, because at least with the buffer setting, you don't have to mess with your XY. If you come in here and we, we go ahead, let's just paste these here. Uh, so we've got the identical things here. Make that a little bigger. And uh, you've got the identical effects here. Let's go ahead and center this off and zero these, right? And then I've, I'm selected on the bottom one. Let's go over to the buffer here. Right click on the buffer and let's click on halves and let's go to the bottom half. So now we've put the bottom uh, uh, layer on a buffer and if we put if we select the top one right click half and put it on the top now now you're automatically having it center for you so what's the result of this whenever you copy and paste it well they're going to look rather close they're going to look very identical so uh, let me uh, let me throw another layer in here and we'll We'll put the we'll put an effect underneath of it so you can compare them. So this is they're they're both going to look rather the same because because they are appear in the same positions. So uh, with that being said, is there a difference? No, there really isn't. But the but the uh, but the difference truly is is that in this specific case, you're having to mess with whenever you're using layers, you're having to mess with the x and y axis, which across different models isn't going to be the same. However. If you're using the text effect and you're trying to separate them, having just the top and the bottom buffer is a much easier way for you to think about this. Now, uh, that, that means that you can do this on any model. So if we, if we copied this and we, we, went to, um, we went and put this onto the garage matrix. So if we go to the garage matrix right here and we paste those in there so you can see once again that the effect is rather the same across all of them now this garage matrix isn't it, this is 20 by 50 this one is 24 by 50 so it, it has a little bit more height but it looks very similar so uh, keep in mind keep in mind that whenever you're using the text effect that scaling has a lot to do with it the other thing too that does have something to do with it and I'll, I'll, I'll show you really quick here and I like to use this use your scroll rule on your mouse whenever you have a drop down box and see where this says X light font. you can change this now if you keep your eyeball on this you'll see that these um, well I'll, I'll bring up the model preview there we go um, 
as I as I scroll through these, you'll see them get bigger or smaller, and you might find that you you prefer using the X Lite font versus your manually tuning a font. Uh, so if you do use the OS fonts, I mean, there's you can use anything in your in your uh, in your entourage there and you but you have to manually go in and change them I find this a little bit more tedious unless I'm looking for uh, a specific look uh, here's script I mean you can you can get real real fancy with it and stuff but um, but in any event uh, the scaling is what doesn't happen in X-Lights but what does scale is whenever you use the buffer and apply it to the two effects for the upper and the lower and that hopefully will answer Jim's question but uh, as far as as far as the text effects goes there's a lot of cool things that it does and it just unlocking the difference between this and the sub buffer is is a, a it's a great little lesson so uh, Jim thanks for the question we really appreciate it and if you have questions put them in the link of the video description put them in the discussion down below uh, or post it up on uh, the PPD pixel Pro University Facebook group. Anytime I see a great question, I always like to hit it with a video because if you're asking the question, somebody else is asking the question. So, folks, that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch the video. If you did like the video, click the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications so you get all of the notifications. And don't forget about our Pixel Pro University Facebook group, which you should totally join. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.